Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Remember Eleven, The Age of Infinity. And last time, pretty interesting. He, uh, Satru told us not to eat anything. Interesting. And also, he learned some interesting facts about Utsumi. So, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Oh. Santaru appears to know what he's talking about. He might not. But, we in this together. Kokoro and Santaru in it together. Let's trust them. Let's not eat anything. I declined it because Santaru had told me to. That's Fia from now on. Don't eat any of the food. There might be poison in it. Until Santaru thinks it's safe to do so, I'll have to bear with it. I told them I don't have much of an appetite right now and immediately returned to my room. All the stress must have been getting to me. I threw myself down onto the warm, welcoming bed and before I knew it, I began to doze off. I lost consciousness. I have a feeling that was a pretty critical decision. Fourth day. Hmm. Progressing. Hmm. Now, I actually don't know if I'm progressing pretty slowly. I mean, this is what, episode 31? Or 30? I think it's 31. I haven't even got to. We're not even to an ending yet. Not to a critical ending. Of course, the others were weren't at this time either, but. Ever 17 ended at about episode 36, 37. Never 7, about the same thing, seems like it. Probably before 40. So, uh, yeah, I mean, some of these episodes have actually been a little bit on the short side. But the first couple, three episodes were pretty long. Because I was doing it live streaming, so. Hmm. Interesting. Of course, we did kind of fail. We did fail a little bit. That did set us back some, too, so. I was awakened by a faint noise. I could hear the sound of the firewood burning up. Opened my eyes. New fuel had been put into the stove. Like a tongue savoring a feast, an orange glaze dances in the mouth of the stove. This is the shelter cabin. Seems I came back before I realized it. I roused myself. From the windows, the dazzling morning light is shining in. The hands of my beloved watch were pointing at se seven. My Izumi seemed to still be asleep. He left it on? I could hear her quiet breathing. You need to sound asleep too. <laughs> You've seen those sorts of predictable things in his sleep. <laughs> That's awesome. With a wry smile, I got out of bed. They're sleeping well. So then, what were those noises I heard before? I casually noticed that Yomoki's bed was empty. I tried touching the blankets. Where do you go so early in the morning? Anxious, I peered out the window. I could see his figure in front of the cabin. Putting on a coat, I went out, I too went outside. Yomoki was standing still, bathing in the morning sun. Hmm. This picture was in the uh, intro uh, credits, as was the last uh, bit in the episode. So, hmm, maybe 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 things are coming to make sense a little bit. Probably not. It's probably another 50 episodes down the road. He was doing nothing, just motionless, staring into the distance, with sorrow in his eyes. I hesitated to speak. I wonder how much time passed.
Okay. Hmm. You know, he he's kind of a, he, he's a bit older. I'm I'm, I'm assuming. Well, I'm not, I'm not assuming he, he is. In the credits, they mentioned old man. Maybe there's some sort of a connection between him and Utsumi. For some reason, I'm getting that right now. I don't know if it's because they because they're having a scene so close to each other. I mean, we, and we did, and like I said, I have a feeling that um, there's a connection between him and Keiko. So yeah, what if she killed? What if she was the killer of the children? The mother went insane. Is that Spia? Yo, know, Mogi dealt with it by pretty much just. Going out into the wild and doing whatever. Amogi abruptly started talking. He was holding the compass Uni had been carrying. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it seems it might be the case. Maybe another thing that was subtle, if I remember right from the picture before, she was kind of facing that way and he's kind of facing that way, which kind of... makes you think they're kind of looking at each other. Through time and space. Hmm. In a calm and very composed tone, Yamogi continued. Yamogi suddenly smiled wryly, a lonely smile. I didn't mean to kill him out. Okay, it's not a hint. It's just right, right out. Okay. Junichi, that name, wherever. He clasped his hands together toward the direction of the place he said his son was resting. Standing next to him, I too clasped my hands, closed my eyes, and prayed for the happiness of Yamogi's son in the next world. Slowly opened my eyes, Yamogi lightly lowered his head. At that moment, from inside the shelter, we heard Uni talking in his sleep. Yamogi's face was lit by a fatherly smile. I shouldn't be indiscreet, but I ended up asking instinctively. Okay. Yamagi took out a cigarette and lit it with the usual lighter. The smell of lighter fuel tickles my nose. While gazing toward the direction where his son rests, he started talking. Yamogi exhaled cigarette smoke. The white smoke shone in the morning sun. Yamogi Yochen no 
sensing the sadness in that proud voice, I nodded. Oops. <笑>ちょっと友達の中で最初に補助輪が取れたっていうのが良かったから僕はあの子の誕生日にギア付きのマウンテンバイクを買ってやってだがその自転車が良くなかったあんなものを買ってやらなきゃよかった。まさかその事故で。いや、足を単純骨折しただけ。頭を打ったかもしれないということで、一応検査入院をすることになった。Yamogi opened his eyes and looked at me. I mean, it seemed he was holding down his anger by force. Mogi averts his eyes. Then he uttered only this. And then from his mouth came that name I knew so well. My breath caught in my throat. Killed by Unibushi Keiko. Hmm. Here's a strange thing. If him and Utsumi are indeed a couple then Simi's being very very nice to Keiko uh, taking care of her uh, I don't know what that would say specifically about her character either she hasn't accepted it or she is Plotting, or she's genuinely a forgiving person. One of those three, I would suppose, would be it. Hmm. Oh. That actually... Actually, that would explain... Why, why, uh, Simi would know the name Kokoro, uh, Fuyakawa Kokoro. Because she would have been in the same newspaper article as her husband. Hmm. The son of Yamogi Junichi Kun, uh, in the Awazumi Municipal Hospital by Inubishi Keiko. Tried to recall the file. Certainly among the victims, there was an elementary school kid who would have been around Uni's age if alive. That was an icy wind suddenly blew across the snowfield. More than a more than a coincidence, I'm pretty certain. Did I tremble because of that wind, or because of the truth that that I had just heard? He threw away a cigarette, crushing it in vexation. Muggy trampled on a cigarette many, many times. Fending the anger he couldn't suppress many, many times. In the end, it seemed the waves of emotions overwhelmed him. His features began to change. That was the Yamogi of just a little while ago, but surely the personified rage and despair of a parent who has who had killed his son. I was troubled over what I should say, and in the end, I like to say were trite words, even though I knew that no kind words would comfort him. Was Yamogi ashamed that I had seen him angry? 
He stopped and a fleeing smile crossed his face. <laughs> then Yamogi muttered as if speaking to himself. Hearing the familiar name, I involuntarily asked again. Hmm. Wait, what happened to the other kid? I had two, didn't they? I had two, Sneering Yamogi looked around at the scenery as though it were the situation he had found himself in surrounding him. Hmm? What? At the scenery of the sheltered cabin, shut away in the snow. The name Callie in the hospital for mental illness? It made me feel uneasy, though I hesitated at first to ask him. Yamogi opened his eyes in surprise. Yamogi nodded, agreeing with himself. The truth is, I came across her in Sphere. But last night, go. <laughs> Let's not go into that. He still thinks you're just insane. He he, he he might lose it if he thinks you're actually really switching personalities. And time traveling. Ooh. Yeah, actually don't tell him anything about time travel. That would be a horrible thing. We want to use it to not buy the bicycle. Actually, that would be a bad thing to tell him. I hesitated to burden Yomogi, but who was still grieving for his son? With the story of the strange phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've heard. I faintly recall the talk I had with Yuni about the dual surnames. <laughs>自立した女性だった。だからその時彼女にヨモギの姓を名乗らせ続けることを強要せず、どちらの姓にするかを選ばせたんだ。おいヨモギさん。ヨモギさん。ヨモギさん。ヨモギさん。ヨモギさん。
Returning to the cabin, your monkey first took out the silent phone and dialed somewhere. Most likely, he, he most likely wanted to try it one more time in hopes that by some slight chance it would work. Oh, I was actually kind of expecting it to work. Muttering in a noise, Yamogi lowered the phone. It didn't connect as I expected. Yamogi looked over his surroundings. He said this with a serious face. Mayazumi, wrapped up in a blanket in front of the stove as usual, said this in a disappointed voice. Oh, yeah. As our supplies were becoming limited, Yomogi started discussing what we should do from this point on. Yuni, still half asleep, was looking at us drowsily, and Mayazumi was being as defined as always. Even so, Yomogi patiently continued the explanation. According to him, the current situation required us to be quite stringent. All the firewood had already been split, and it was doubtful that it would last another nightfall. And if we continued to keep the lantern turned on all day like we had before, it would run out our fuel by tomorrow. Our remaining food supply was more serious. We'd already reached the bottom of our, of our freeze-dried food, and all that was left were literally emergency rations. Specifically, there were only two cans of hardtack and one bar of chocolate remaining. That's not good. That was it. From there, Yamogi began proposing ways we could start rationing our remaining supplies. I became anxious. What Yamogi is suggesting is probably right, but it's still this cold even when we're using the stove. If we turn it off, so what kind of cold will we have to bear? Moreover, we have a physically weak child in this cabin. <laughs> Mayazumi made a cinema for a mark. Mayazumi, what the creo? Hakaraka and I just want Mosca Stara, Hastani de Motaska Kurukamo Sirenajanago. Mosca Stara, Otto Isuka Matemo, Taska Kunai Kamo Sirenai. As Mayazumi swallowed her words in irritation, Yamogi talked to her in a calm tone.本当はもっと早く救助が来ると思ってたよ。だから節約は最小限にしてた。何せ飛行機事故だ。消息を絶った時点で大規模な捜索活動が行われるはずだろう。それなのに救助がやってこない。ひょっとしたら何か不都合があ